All right, let's keep going. So, try Zorox now. Cool. So with Zorox, uh, I l is there anything in the output that TXT? Do I need to re-download that? Uh, yes. Okay. That's what the that's the encrypted and the key. Oh, I think I have that in the thing. Hold on, let me. Yeah, this thing, right? Uh, hold on. What stream? What are you doing? All right, so I'm gonna take a wild guess and assume that they're using the Zor encryption and then flipping it. Just a wild guess. Especially with the flip. similar to the Zor encryption, but I think each character has its own key. Bruh. Because this to me here, right, is creating an array. Each key is 1 to 256. So it's creating an array for each value in the length of the flag. Creating an array for each value in the length of the flag. Yeah, so there's an array that is the length of the flag in each uh, that array is yeah. 1 and 256. So by that standard, um, Zor, where's the Zor out? So what's Zorox and what's Encrypt? So the ENC, or, hold on. ENC is the encrypted part right and then Xerox is each key right what does enumerate do that I think it iterates like a, a map function in JavaScript yeah, unless I checked. I could be wrong. Let me make a. Do I have bpython still open? I do. Alright. Um. Or does it get the actual. When I ran, ran through testing this earlier today, this was the index of the loop. This was the actual value of said key. So v was the value of the key here. So I think that gets each index and it assigns that value to v. Um, say, say that one more time. So it's taking the key here. So for index one, it'll run through this, assign V to that index's value, and then this will be zero, obviously. So instead of doing just a, um, a range here, it's uh, just um, doing the value set. Are you yeah. presenting your screen? or? Oh, yeah, shoot. You're all good, you're all good. Let me pull this up. All right, bet. Okay, so uh, we we have something that looks like let's just say like zero, one, two, three, four. So yeah. instead of doing just a for loop here and then grabbing this inside, I think it just grabs the first index zero or whatever it is, and then mm -hmm. assigns that to v. So we have a basic for loop here. I is our iterator, and V each time through the loop is the value of the index. Let me try at. that actually. So for I, V, in enumerate our key. Oh, whoops. I uh, will just print I 
and print v. It's it's just like a map function in JavaScript if you've messed with those. All right, so I I oh so they just get each of the values. Yeah, so, so our I, I value is our iterator, now. and v is our is the value. V. Yeah. Got you. Okay. Okay, so in here it uses v here, so it's basically taking the flag i, so the index of so the flag, index so zero of zero, and it's just square rooting it, or it's just whatever that is exponent. Yeah, I have no idea what the exponent is, because um, square root would just be the um, asterisk asterisk too. Yeah. So how do we undo? Exponent? So what's the inverse of that? Yeah. What does that operator even do? Let me Google that. <laughs> it, like, you know, like the little number. I forget. It's like two to the little number of two. Uh, exponent. It is called an exponent. Yeah. So what we're all, basically all it's doing is taking the value. Oh, but that's weird. Because this flag value should be a character, but it's multiplying it by a number. All right, so what is this bitch? Yeah, but like, what does that mean? All right, let me open uh, this jump. Yeah, so let's just do like, so two squared, right? So if I do two, this thing two, that's four. If I do two, this thing two, that's zero. Um. <laughs> Oh, it's the Zor operator. Oh, got you, got you, got you, got you. That made total sense. Hold on, let me see what. What's the Zor operator? <laughs> okay. It says each bit to one if only if. Yeah, so if I did like true. Can I do like true? False, and that would be true. Yeah, okay. Got you. And then if I did, okay, yeah. So it's the it's the Zor operator. Okay. I keep saying Zor. I guess it's XOR, but Zor is easier to say. So okay, and what I is, get what it does now. That do now. So the exclusive OR operator is basically what it means. So it will only be true if it is um, if the values are like exclusively OR. So like. So if they're not, if they're both true, then it's wrong. But if it's yeah, so if they're both true, is wrong. If they're both false, if it's wrong. But if one is true, one is false, then it's true. Like exclusively, it has to be an or, rather than like the typical or when you can do like okay true yeah, or okay. true. So then, how do we get two numbers out of it? Because then, literally straight from there, or how? Wait, I guess it's just two individual numbers. So it's getting the index of i, and then it's getting. Or the, sorry, the fla index, fuck, the flag index, or whatever. Yeah, and they're running uh, a Zor operation with it on V. And that's going to be the encrypted. So the encrypted is all the Zor values. So we just have to run the Zor operation on them again with the key, right? So we know the first one's F again. Yeah. And then let me throw this in here as well. Right, so if I did like Xorox index one and then encrypt index one, it's 109. What do these numbers represent? <laughs> How do you, uh, convert them back are these like unicode or something or like i have no idea that's what it's weird to me how it's doing that or op or that xor operation but the oh, output yeah. is the number do you understand what this is doing no i have what no chance? idea i didn't know because this is start range this is the end range oh the increment of negative one got you so it's going backwards okay okay oh so that's where it flips yeah that's where it flips 
fucking fuck. All right. What is this operation here? That's setting the k a equal to the square root or the exponent of <laughs> this one. Yeah. Line twenty. Yeah. Uh, it's setting k equal to the index of j with the Zor operation of k. Right. Hold up. So they showed it up here. I think. Yeah, it is right here. Yeah. So x and then caret equals three would be the same thing as x equals x caret caret three. So it would this in that case it would be this but is basically saying k is equal to k zor operation k j. I don't understand this thing because Here, I'll, I'll okay, so I think the zor operation when used in comparing does what you're saying it does but this operation in math is the exponent so if you were to do yeah. four to the, that zor thing to four like here it's just going to give us 64 or 16 or something okay it doesn't even do that all right let me make a backup of it so i can start playing around with the code uh let me do uh cd into Zorox back uh, Zorox at pi. There you go. Um, so let's start playing around with the code. Um, so flag equals flip dot read strip. Okay. Where do we use the flag? Append. So the thing with the Zor, right, is like, it's basically the same thing, uh, encryption-wise, decryption-wise. Hold on, do I still have that slides thing in my history? Uh, breaking, breaking Cypher's Google Slides. Yes, sir. Come on, load, 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 load. All right, let me search up Zor. Yeah, here you go. Okay. See that. So. Yeah, here you go. So yeah, encrypting with Zor, right? Um. So this is the plain text value, and this is the what our binary key right so you just run the operations and see this is exclusively or right here so this would be one oh. and this is exclusively or right here so this is one and then everything else is zero yeah. so that would be letter c because this is the binary letter for c so that's it on like the level binary and then this is the deep so is that what it's doing so this is the basics. So this the is basically binary. what okay. Zor is doing, at least with binary. Um, but it goes. It applies the same way. But if you know part of the ciphertext, you can get the key, because we know flag, right? Yeah. So, I did this a while back. back. Yeah, but <sighs> we still have the key, though. Well. Here's the thing, right? So yeah, if we have the plain text, right? And if we take the cipher text and run the Zor operation on it, we can uh -huh. get the key. And then use the key to decrypt the rest of it. So we'll so, just take the output and input. We'll take, so the Zor, let's see. I have a script I used a while back, or made rather. Uh, so where am I? GitHub CTF. Uh, Cyberpocalypse on here? Cyberpocalypse. Uh, yeah, this thing, and then. Hold on, let me copy my old code. Zor.py and then face stream two.
What the fuck? Does it always do that shit? Alright, cool. So... Right, yeah, we know our flag format is flag, and then technically that. The only problem is it's flipped. <laughs> so just flip flip the OR or the XOR and the encoding right off the bat before you use them. Does that make sense? No. Because you're going to plug in your <laughs> output, right? So the flag output from their, like what they gave us? Uh, wait, but like, yeah. yeah. So technically, couldn't we just flip both of those? And then it'll be in the right order before we run them through the decryptor. I understand, but at the same time, I have no idea what you're saying. <laughs> Here, look at my code. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see what you're doing. All right, so you're yeah, doing the clone clone negative one. So if I do that, it should flip my entire. So our last yeah, yeah, yeah. index. So. X. But the problem so is, right so the thing with the Zor actually, these are each of the keys for each of the letters, right? Yeah. And then this is the encrypted, the encrypted versions encrypted of character. each letter, but they're still backwards. Okay, so I see what you're saying. So we need to flip these. So we can do Zorox flip. Is equal to Xerox and the clone clone negative one. And then you can just do ANC ANC. Cool. So with this, right, um, if we are iterating, because we have to each decrypt each character by itself, right? Yeah. So let me copy these and then paste them into here. Do we have any imports for using here? Random. Right, so if so we're gonna have to iterate basically, right? So for I in or so for key in uh Xorox flip right so that's each key and then and that should that iteration should work for the next one too right the uh, encoded text we can still use that same yeah so um, character equals and code with the index of key. Oh, I see what they were doing. Key index in enumerate. Okay, so and then right. So if we can say uh, encrypted here is equal to the ENC flip at that index and then what we can do is decrypt it right so how do you decrypt it this <laughs> um, the operator but we have to figure out the right key first oh but we have the key yeah but how do we get back to text this is my old code. Get key based on the flex formatting. 
I'm so lost. I don't understand. Hold up. I, I understand, but I don't. Like, so, <laughs> for CM in the zip, encrypted flag, the flag format. So, instead of encrypted flag, we do encrypted character. And then if we grab this, throw in here. And then just do a little tab. Oop. Let's just print plain text key. Let me just get an idea of what's happening. So Python 3 zor.py out of range. All right, let me do this. Um, index equals zero. index plus equals one and then we can do right yeah so not this but we need this and then we can basically Let me get an idea of what's happening. I'm so lost on what I'm trying to do. Hold on. Oh yeah, it's because we need to... <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> um... So with open flag that txt read binary as flip flag equals flip dot read strip keys equals random int oh yeah that's right so each key ranges from one to two fifty six yeah so. And then, right, yeah, so Xerox is each key. So the first key is 56. And then the, the encryption process, you get 119. So what happens if you just do... Uh, okay, so I think the Xerox is flipped, but I don't think the encryption one is. Really? Because the only thing in that for loop that flips it is the key itself. Am I right with that? You might be. I just flipped it on my end and I didn't get any. I mean, I still get this random output. Maybe it's the other way around. Why not try it? So, if this, if the Xorax is flipped and this isn't, then this would be 26. Oh, whoops. Uh, 34. How does it get the characters? How do we go from text? So go from number to character, you use the CHR function. Oh, so it is using Unicode. Yeah, so this, look, I'll show you what I have. I'm still getting some random output, but maybe you'll be able to. Oh. That's just a quote. What's the order of the lowercase f? 
It's 102. So, this is 56. And then, if the encryption is normal, it's 26. That's 34. If it's 119, it's 79. Let's try the other way. What's the... It's 1. So we did 1 and uh, 26. 1 and... Uh, I'm kind of just brute forcing this. Um, Still not a career. Wait, wait, you got it. Oh, no, you didn't. No. How, okay, in here, how is it getting that? Because I don't see the order function anywhere. Maybe it's not. How is it? So it's getting the indexes and shit, but like. Okay, wait, so from my understanding, right? The Zorox is the f keys that are inverted. And then the ENC is the encrypted versions of those numbers. Okay, but is each, is the number inverted on the key, not the actual key, like not the list of keys, but is each number inverted? We need to really, that, that for loop with the J range, we need to figure out. For J in range. No, it's just flipping because it's not, it it's, doesn't have a secondary. Oh, it might. So and for J for in the e range e. of I to zero. So if I. Oh, it totally is. It's flipping the number, the key itself. Because I is the key index. So we're already within that first list. And now it's going to the, so each J is each um, item in each number. So try what you were just doing, but flip one of the numbers. So like the encode, do, try 62 instead of. All right, so 56 and 62, 56 and 9, or I guess, 911. Then we could do 65 on 26. And then 65 on 119. Nah, because maybe it's not using Unicode. trying to figure out we're doing uh Zorox yeah. what section is that in crypto uh, of course I just I had, I had to come back right at the crypto card so so how I'm reading this I do think each each number is inverted itself in the um, key. So the Zorox or the ENC? The Zorox. So. Or J. So that's J in the range of I, which takes in the key. And then in the range from zero to negative one, and then it sets I to J. Or okay. Alright, yeah, I'm gonna restart. Hold up. <laughs> um, so, for key in the flip Zorox,
difference between Linux and Windows. So for key and Zorax flip, the encrypted character is equal to the index of the uh, encrypted flip, so that would be this one, 119. Let me see if I can even just do the operation first and then I'm gonna start tweaking it. Um, so the for flag format is flag with that thing. Um, Random what's open flag on text RB as flip. So, say plain text key is equal to, let's say, uh, key. somewhere because the oh does the Zor operator already use Unicode I don't know that's a good if question. I do so wait so I did things. key and then Zor encrypted so my first instinct is to take uh, the contents of output.txt and put them in for the respective variables, Zorox and Encode, or ENC. It is. I think. <laughs> Maybe. Wait, what the fuck? What's the fucking order or CHR of 79? Something here is not right. Because we need... So it's either 156 Wait. <laughs> According to the fucking Zorox.py, hold on. Which one gets inverted again? 
the Zor. So the Zorox is flipped. And but then the, the EC itself is. You think each no like you each number is flipped? Yeah. Like. Because that for loop breaks into each individual index. And then when it writes to the encode, or I mean the Zorox, it uh -huh. takes the whole K. And reassigns the value from one all the way to. So I, right, so V enumerate key. So let's say the key is like 30 or something. So it'll go for each from index zero, index or index of zero, value zero of key. And then for J in range of I, so let's say that's zero. So zero comma zero negative one. And they add that value to K. Wait, key of J. So key. But if key, oh, key's an array. Oh, what the fuck? That's what I'm saying. It's it's going. Oh. Into I see what it's doing, kind of, and it's weird. Well, I might need to restart from scratch. I need a second. Think this shit out. So. Dumb question, how far through did you guys get? Because, like I said, the only thing I did was take the contents of the output file and plug them into the Python file. Got you. So we're going on a limb that it's, you know, Zor encryption, and we kind of determined that because it's using the Zor operator, and it's called Zor uh, rocks. So, um, or I keep saying Zor. It's XOR, but it's easier to say Zor. Um, and then we took out those uh, arrays that we saw and determined that one of them is probably going to be flipped because first of all it's Zorox so the name actually gets flipped in the name of the challenge but also uh, we see this uh, file name being called flipped and in addition to that uh, the 4j in range i comma zero negative one the negative one is going to flip the value somehow So, um, those are all like the context clues. So with the Zor encryption, uh, I kind of talked about this in that lecture I did a while back, but you can basically um, discover the key if you know part of the plain text. Um, like if you know, let's say like the first letter of the plain text is C and you throw the cipher text with it, run a Zor operation, and then the key, you can get the first character of the key. Um, so you can do that with, because we have what, flag and then the, what, curly brace? So those yeah. are the first five characters of the key. Um, well, as you know, those are, you can you only need the first character to get the key. Fuck. Um, but yeah, we have the F, so we can just um, try to use that F character to get the key. Um, so that's kind of what we're doing. Um, but we're kind of confused on how they're actually encrypting it so we can reverse engineer it. Um, at least I am. Uh, yeah, I'm lost too, but I'm picking away at it. <laughs> it's all good. All right, let me put this bitch over here. So... Import random. Let me import the iter tools that I use as well. Because I'm going to need to use that. Alright. So, let's say, you know, we have our Zorox and we have our encrypted list. Um, and then we have the flip versions. One of them doesn't get used though, right? So, we know that... Or let's say we start index zero. So let's 
So we technically only need the flag format of F, right? So let me comment a lot of this stuff out. Um, so let's say our flag format is equal to the string of F, right? Because we know this is the first character. To get F, we need to, what's the operation we run? So we take our plain text character, which is F, and run the first cipher text character on it. So our cipher text is our ENC, right? So that would be the flag format on the encrypted character. So let's run that. Strain and int. Oh. Fuck. Oh, yeah. So can we just do like the ORD of okay so I got something and then can we just print uh, CHR of this alright yeah I just got bullshit <laughs> alright um something interesting so let's see if we don't use the flip version let's use the normal version it's still weird oh yeah so no look at this so the key it's giving us so in that for loop it's appending that key to that list, but it's actually using V to do the operation. So Interesting. What's v? v? V is the value of key before it gets reversed. Interesting. So he's giving us the reversed output. So what would V be? Wait, hold up. So for I, V, and numeric key. So V is the value. Yeah, so for each index that's the initial value and then the key he's giving us is the reversed value i'm pretty sure i'd like to run this through a like our own thing and see if it's actually doing what we think it is cool um wait so flag format equals f and then plain text key equals the order of the flag format with the so instead of the encrypted character, wait, so what does V belong to? The key value? Yeah, so and then Zorox is the key, right? Um, Zorox is the key after it's been flipped or edited. So we have to figure out what this script is or what that for loop is doing to the key so we can reverse that. Is the CPF still going on? Yes. It's going on until Saturday, I think. Oh, okay. Also, why is your name Gamodian? Uh, ask Shepard. No, no. <laughs> okay. Because he's gay. Oh, no way. Are you guys really in the top 20? Yep. Yeah, we're trying to <laughs> kill this shit. A uh, bunch of fucking try-hard hackers in here, you know? Just sweating yeah. Python out the ass. You know what, baby? Or would it be JavaScript out the ass? I actually don't know JavaScript. I'm not going to learn it. I know too many languages. I fucking hate programming. <laughs> What's more of a meme, though, for uh, a code than anything? You said what's more of a meme? What's more of a meme for code, though? Like, is it a little bit like C++ or, you know, I think, JavaScript. like, Python's kind of like the GOAT when it comes to it. And then, mm -hmm. like, everybody hates, like, C and C++, even though they're, like, really great for what they do. Everybody hates them. Because it's just, like, C will hate you and will help you in any way, shape, or form. Or would it be a sweating if-then statement out the ass? A sweating if-then statement out the ass. 
<laughs> if X is true, then apply certain effect or something. I don't know. But if then sigma's out the ass. Oh, is it need to be a bite string? Is that like gonna change anything? Uh, no, doesn't change anything. I know if then statements are exceptionally fucking basic, but still. No, you're good. At this point, I don't even know what I'm looking at. I'm kind of just playing around. Oh, so I see what you're doing, Fizz. You're trying to play around with the. Uh, yeah, I want to see what loot. he's doing. The only reason I know about if then statements is I messed around on Khan Academy a little bit with their little programming kind of thing that they had. Gotcha. What does it do, Fizz, if you figured That's it out? I'm trying to figure out. I'll let you know. You bet. So for key in Zorax flip encrypted character. So what did they do? Yeah, I'm heading to bed, y'all. Y'all have a good one and windish. Appreciate it, bro. Yep. Yeah, we're trying. Uh, encrypted that append. So for index value and the enumerated key, K is going to equal to one. Then for J in the range of the index to zero, inverted. Then it's going to assign K equal well, this to the index. Oh, it's going to run Zor operations on each index. No, that, that's out. So that's in that for loop. It's each index of the key. Yeah. But that second for but loop, the inner for one. loop, each yeah. letter of each key or each character of each key. I'm just trying to figure out because I've never seen the syntax. But why is it going to I to zero? Yeah, I don't know. And then negative one, I've never seen three things in a range before. So it literally just reverses it. What do you mean by reverses it? So it starts, so I gave it the index. So whatever I is, it starts at that number. And then. So it counts down. Yeah. Got you. So like if, for instance, if we got I, I. So if the first index, one or zero. Mm-hmm. It will set that to zero. It will be zero. And then it just Yeah, so up. the negative one is the iterator, so it's going down each time. Yeah. And then it's grabbing that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's just reversing that thing. So it's counting down from 255. And, or at least if I is 255, it's counting down yeah. from 255. And then running a K, so it's running one Zor, the index that it gets, or the counting down index. Let's see, um, so the Zor will be, I'm going to try the second, so 902 Zor 188. There's some funky character, what about Unless it's like, jeez, I have no idea. So let's say that our key is equal to 255, like you're using. Um, for I, V, and your key, K equals one. So, so 
So let me print. Let me print. Let me see. INT object not iterable. Just do list range twenty-five. Flag is not defined. On line, it's the encode line where it pushes to the encode. The encode line? Yeah, go down a little further. Right there on line 34. Oh, uh, so this would be. Is he home? Say so, yes. Yeah. Damn. Ah. Flag was flipped at read. Oh. Uh, what would our flag index be? Just give it like the string of F to mess with it. Let's see. Because we know the first index is F. Oh, yeah. But then that's where it gets confusing. So if we do CHR. Oh, is it already? Yeah, my bad. What's the order it? of F? One or two. Oh, wait a second. Is that right? Nope. For I in, oh crap, hold up. Uh, L equals this bitch. For I in L, just do a CHR on I. Okay, no. I got something, but it's still not there. Yeah. Um, so online on the xor.py what's being weird to me is the flag i would return a string yeah and then it's doing that xor operator on a integer well so you know what fuck it i'm restarting <laughs> <laughs> I'm too confused. I need to fucking clear the shit. You think that? All right. So, what do we have? Right. So we have Zorax. Zorax is the keys, right? Yeah. So Zorax is the keys, and then let me grab this, and then do that there. So encrypt is the ciphertext, right? Yeah. Cool. So, index here, I might need that later. So, how does this thing work, right? So, it reads the flag. So, we'll just do flag is equal to F, right? Because we know that's the first character. Um, then it gets the key. If the key is a random integer for I. But no, technically, we have the keys right here, right? So. Yeah, so that's just the first iteration, so yeah, you can skip that part. So I'm gonna just do key is equal to Zorox. And then we'll play around with that. Flip, right? Because the Zorox are flipped? No. Or is the NC that's flipped? Uh, the I Zorox flip. is flipped, but it's each character, not the whole list. Oh, so each individual? 
Yeah. I'm not sure. I don't know. Because with do this, that. when you displayed this, it started counting down. Yeah, but that was counting down in each. Oh, I see what you mean. Maybe it's not flipped and it's largest number to smallest number. I think this range. So instead of incrementing upward, it's basically just incrementing downward. Okay. So then what's so, it doing? Oh, J in the key. So for J in the range of what I, so let's say if I was uh, like one, then it's going to go from one to zero and then do an XOR operation for the index of that key. So then it would so, be zero one or one zero for the key of the first index? Uh, that's a great question. <laughs> <laughs> so it would be it, it it counts down, right? Your the range counts down, but then it's so it's basically grabbing the highest number in oh no, wait, because it's using I need to make this more readable. I'm gonna replace I with index. Actually no, that's gonna so, be way too much work. Are we just are we supposed to edit the Python file that came with the challenge? Yeah, just make a backup of it. So you can always revert back to it. And this really handy bash alias that just makes a copy of the file and says it as a dot back. Uh, you need to send me that one. I will. For I, V, enumerate key. Okay, so... Right, so the key is equal to those keys. Got you. Then, let's say that, uh, so for index value and enumerate key, k is going to equal 1. And then for j in the range, it's going to do a Zor operator on the key at the index of the number it's counting yeah, down from. So it's like <laughs> what? That number is so messed up by the time This we is get so good. What? How many souls does this have? Of curiosity. 138. Okay. So we can it's get this. Okay, so by the so the first index because if you if you look at the output, it the first uh, operation is always one. So the the first um, XOR output is one. So I, I I ran this file a bunch of times and put it to a different output with a different flag, and the first is always one because I think we have a hard coded K to one first. So I think it's using the previous operation so the previous key oh what the heck all right i think i get it so let me do index to make this easy to read and let's come with this out um index index it's so hard for me to read letters sometimes and this is the value right v's value yeah yeah so Instead of J, I'm going to do count down. Because that's what I'm assuming it's doing. Count down. So K is equal to the key, because, yeah. Yeah, and so then so the first iteration, so zero, when we go on index zero, that key stays the same. That K stays the same. But the next time through, it's setting K right so k now equals the previous yeah so it's going to equal the previous XOR operation plus it, no it's or it's going to XOR itself on its own operation yeah i mean on its own value or well, on its own the, whatever the previous XOR operation was is what it runs against first yeah right so yeah so we have to factor in all those previous 
Exorot mad. <laughs> All right, well, no, we got this, we got this. So for index value and the numerate key, um, right, so we have the encrypted version, right? And we have the key, and we yeah. know the first character, which the means- The key is encrypted too. It's just funky. Funky town. So what's the actual key? K, the actual key is K, right? Well, the first time it's it's doing the operation of one to the the XOR of zero, right? So if we do one XOR zero, we'll get a return of one, and that's what we're getting in our output. Is our first output is one. So then it saves that one, goes through the next one. So then it'll do. Um, takes the next key and then runs the XOR operation against the last key. So if we have J of key... Oh my gosh, but it's in a for loop for each index of the number itself. Yeah, all right, that's what I thought. So, let's flag. So if we do the ORD on this. Okay. So let's say index, and then index. Cool, so this will be value, and that will be value. And then the K, and just do key equals K. And then we can do um,
All right, so with the index is zero, the value is 56, and the key is one. But, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, you have to do the operator. Yeah, hold on. Oh, yeah, I just want to print those multiple times when we get that right here. So I think it's changing each index of the key to something different. Yeah. So it's running that, that XOR operation on each index of the key based on the last iteration through it. If so like if if k equals one to start and then we run so k equals key of j which let's say maybe it's zero then k now equals zero for the next time through yeah you, you see it right there so for which one so for like, let's say on your first one was a single digit, so you only had it run through once. But your next one, your second one, was a... Oh, your third one, sorry. Oh, was so a two-digit so number. Does it yeah, and then three-digit three number. Time. So there's a four times on the next four. How many indexes are in flag, though? One, two, three, four. Why is there... Oh, because it's iterating through the, the keys. So what if we use the normal Zorax list? Very cool. So I yeah, have so that concept control. still exists. Okay, so I have my own personal Zor encoder now. Nice. Now it'll work on a decoder. All right, so Fizz, yeah, I see what you're saying. So when the index, it iterates through the number of times the index is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah, so if it's index of three, it'll iterate do it three times but it's weird that it to me it's not based on the length of the number it's based on the well see the my flag oh. is bullshit right what's the length of uh, Zorox I think it was 28 when I counted it earlier but I might be wrong let me just do a quick print length of uh, Zorox I was at 38. Um, so we know it's 38 characters. So what's that? We can just do class. Um, wait, 38 minus 4. So that's 34 times the letter A. We might be going about that. What if we can... Oh no, because the key changes every single letter. There you go. There you go. All right, cool. So, yeah, I see. So when the key is 34, this does it 34 times. Let's see, I just needed to make the flag the length of, but the only thing that matters is the first four. Alright, cool. So, control shift D, comp this out because that's going to be helpful later. But in the meantime, what's the error it gave us what before? If, what if we just brute force it? How? Well, I guess we can't. We can brute force the first four. Well, we only need to brute force the letter F and we got the key. No, we don't, because the key changes per letter. Oh, fuck. Yeah. Wait. 
There's, I mean, we could brute force the ones we know for sure, but the all the middle ones, we have no idea. And because it's all uh, Unicode, it, we can't really brute force to see if it returns an actual letter because a bunch of them will return real letters. We really just need to figure out how we can reverse this altering of the key. So like, let me make the flag back to the length of 38 characters, right? When we do that. So those, is this right? Zorox as the key or should I use the flipped one? No, use Zorox as the key because well, really, the key we have is not the key it used to encode it. Because but down here on line 17, it uses V before it alters it and sends it to us. Not necessarily, I think. Because with um, this stuff, right? Mm -hmm. We know that using these keys we can get this hypertext. Oh, wait a second. I think we might be reading this wrong. No, I read it wrong just then. <laughs> Say that cool. again. So, uh, what it's saying is it's basically saying that using these keys, uh -huh. we can get this hypertext. Yeah. So, depending on but I don't, I don't think it, I think that's how it would work normally, but because it's the flipped or whatever he's changed, I think he wants us to first figure out what the real keys are and then run the decrypt with the right keys. Okay. So how do we, we get reverse, the keys? We need to reverse this, this loop that alters them. Okay. So we increment upward. So what Instead we should do, let's start with a hard-coded, like let's say we start with 233. What we want to do is use the function he uses to encrypt it and then print out what it is. And then we want to write a function that reverses it somehow. So we know what we're getting is right. So like this section right here, we want to take it. Let's say key for now equals 233. And then so instead here. of counting down, we'll count up. Do all? So instead of negative one, we just go from zero to the index. So what does that look like? Question. Do all the Zorb ciphers... Never mind. I was going to say this. All the cipher text, uh, each thing start with an X. I think so. Um, if you're working with hex, it can have that, like, slash X thing, but... Uh... Yeah, if you look at my, uh... Over there at Noncon General, that's my encryptor. Yeah, that's in hex. Yeah, I have to say, Copilot is really damn powerful. Uh, this fucking thing coded most of it for me. <laughs> so let's Alright, if there's any bright ideas, I started seeing if we can count upward, but the thing is we still have to run that Zor operation on it, right? 
Yeah. And then I don't think I'm using the right set of keys. I'm I'm trying to see what how it alters it compared to like if we start with a base number, I want to see what it outputs if it's somewhat close to what we have or if it's like looks like binary. Key is not defined. Yes, it is. No, it's not. I have an idea. All right, so. So instead of dot appending K, we'll do order K and then, I'm oh, sorry, the character of K and then we will append the character version of the order. Interesting because it gets like what? Midnight for you. There you go. Okay. So if we Yeah, so this flag, right? This flag is completely inaccurate. Well actually I just do it so we can get the full list, right? So bites like up strength out of bound. Okay, I just need to gather the whole fucking thing. Dot join. Dot join. Alright, so if we do this. All right, there you go. I made a better script. So the only problem is the algorithm between. It's doing something wrong. Ah, uh, fuck. Hmm. What's wrong? So with the keys, right? The keys are what's confusing me. Yeah. So here, I, I took this for loop that they have in there. I gave it a list of predefined keys and then had it append to just a, a, a alt key. So what yeah. it's encrypting the code with, so right here where it's going in, it's using V down here in the encode. Mm -hmm. What the value it would use is 210. And the value it's adding to our list here is like 57. Wait, wait, don't mean? take that window down. Hold on, let me test something out real quick. Okay. Let me run, yeah. So if I did, uh, where the values again, 210. And then, So it key use and it returns the value. Can you have it show the value as well? Um, I just hard coded. I just wanted to see how it altered the number, so I don't have the actual value gotcha. where I don't have the conversion. But Wait, what's so what I want to do is take this key. So I want to take now. I want to go and make a new iteration that goes takes the alt key here, the key returned. And we can convert it back so to the So the value it's using is 235. So key uses 210, the value is 235. And then it returns 57. But I forgot, because with Zor, right, it's exclusively or, so it goes both ways. It's like a, uh, it's kind of like caching, how it's like a single direction algorithm, I guess, I don't know. Mm -hmm. but so if we not, were to do So this you can do 210, 57. Yeah, so you can do 210 and 57 to get the value, or you can do 210 and the value to get 57. But we don't know 210, that's the issue. These are the ones that were the randomly generated this time. Well, how 235, if we did 57, that's how you get 210. 
Okay, so we just have to do the Unicode of, or no, just the XOR value and the ENCODE value. These two together should give us the actual key, and then we can run it again. I think so. I'm working on doing a decoder for it, so whenever you well, it's going to be a hex decoder, so it probably Get won't work. Key.py. So, you're basically saying if we get, if we get those arrays, right? So, for I, oh god, for index in uh, the Xorox keys. Yeah. What are we doing with that? Just that we're. So just try taking index. Um, to the XOR value of the encode index at the same spot. So take. Got you. So index equals zero for I and Zorix. So if we just did I or print, this is a proof of concept, I and then. the operation of the index and then just did index plus equals one. So Python three get key that pi. Okay. And now run that. I think we have to do the <laughs> I don't, so to take the number we get from that output and use it as the real key for the encoded text and then character get the character position of that oh what the fuck right. so if I just print A and run the script again there you go so I got this list so if I just do the Zor that whatever I would just say key list or something I don't know is equal to this thing and then we just use the key list and then we just do what the fuck? It does not look right. <laughs> yeah, that's what I keep getting when I run my other one too. It's because it's just going to random spots in the Unicode and grabbing random stuff. I so. Oh, hold on, let me try something before I bring this. Shit. I so I have encryption working. I don't. Fuck! I can't get decryption working. It's literally the same. It's just, so if you have three different things, you have the key, the answer, or the key, the output, and input. You just have to, you, to get the input, you put in the key and the output. To get the in, or output, you can put in the input and the key. The operator is the same back and forth, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. They all equal each other, whatever you do. So, Wait, so when we did the stuff in B Python, right? What were each of what was the two ten? That was so the two ten is the key, two. right? But it's like the hypothetical key. Yeah. Yeah. So that's so the one here. I'll to get the key, we took two thirty five, which was what? Uh to get so two ten to get the key we took the output oh, wait. 
So the key returned. So key returned is what we would have in our list here, in our XOR list. But the key this goes both ways, right? Active. Yeah. Okay. So we can just use the key that they returned and run a XOR operation on the value. Is that what that is? I th think so. If we ran that on what we have as our output, then we should be able to get the key they actually used, right? Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Index is out of range. I don't. If the index is out of range, you might need to make your key longer. Or fly it, or whatever you're trying to use. Um. Okay. Or the Zor and the encoder are the same length, right? Uh. I am so sorry, but I have no idea. <laughs> Next, <laughs> four and then 38, 38, okay, yeah. So, for index value and the key, k equals one, if this is the index, that's the value, count down, print key. Wait, hold up. What's this? Oh, yeah. Okay, let's get rid of that. So, basically, this second K value is the key that they returned, right? Uh -oh. I believe so. That's the one, yeah. That's the one they returned to us. But that so is used we... against the next character. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. So all we need to have there is the value. And theoretically, uh, I don't like that word theoretically. That's so ugly. Uh, <laughs> hypothetically, oh, uh, for I in. Key, I don't know. What key did you use? The Zorox? Yeah. Okay. So technically, okay, so if this is our array of key I just say possible keys is equal to an empty list and then we can just do pass okay keys so dot append k value Okay, they don't they don't have the same, the relationship we think they do because the encoding of the output so the output we get in let's say 26 here never actually used the key of one so the 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 operator on that those two will not return the actual key i am hella confused so just be because remember it was using V instead. Oh, oh, so we, we, oh. We can't actually use the encoded message as the third leg, I guess is what I'm saying. I think I understand. Let me try this. So it works up there. But why does it not work? So key is this, possible keys, whatever. Down here.
Also, Fizz, what time is it for you, out of curiosity? You said 1.30? 10.30. Oh, 10.30. You Canadian or something? No, I'm a Washingtonian. Oh, Washingtonian. Gotcha. What time is it where you are? 1.22. You have time? <laughs> EST, and I got school tomorrow, but I might not go. I'll to work tomorrow. It's a Friday. Ain't got no classes. Okay, so this is weird. Hold on, I'm gonna take my hoodie off so I can take my headphones off so I don't hear you. I think we can so, actually get this. I think so. I want to do something. I want to make another. Let's do. So rocks. I want to do. Output key. Inner key. This is strange. About this. Not even give anybody the option for that. So, I need to figure this out. Um, what exactly is going wrong? So we okay. count down. Okay, here. F L A G. Okay. So this is how I ran their exact script, but I also had it print out the inner key it was using to get the encrypted. So, oh, okay, for so. F, it randomly picked one between one and whatever, 256. And it used this to encrypt it and then outputs this. to us so your output text or our wait output go text. back on that for me let me see if there's the zor thing right so that says like one and then like is that 46 yeah 46 oh which one which one is this okay, it's the wrong window here these two should relate this one won't. All right, so 46 carat and then 72. Yeah. So that's 102. So now if you did 72 against 102, we should get 46. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, that makes sense. Yeah. But 
we have to figure out how this 46 turns into one. Well, look at this, right? So, you know, this is like the decryption, right? So it's the word, right? Set for text, the key, and then you do the sort operation. That's how you get the plain text, right? All we need is the plain text character, which is our F, run the Zora operation on it with the ciphertext, and we should get the key. And then once we get the key, we can re-go through it and decrypt the rest of the flag. No, because each key is a random one. Remember it? It's but the same if we can, well, that's the thing, right? So each key is a random one, but it isn't a random one because it's just counting down from a certain set range and I'm running Zor operations on it. So all we need to do, oh, I see what you're saying about brute forcing. <laughs> yeah, but so you, you were onto something there. So our, this range here starts at 38 every time. What starts at 38? This range is I. Oh no, it doesn't. It's V. So that goes from zero to thirty-eight or thirty-seven. But that's what's weird to me. So for it's like it's running that Zor operation once, so against what it originally was, and then for each number in each key. So like, for instance, it'll take this inner key run this against one, get a return, and then it'll go to six, run this against the last return, and then it'll get whatever. And then whatever is left over there gets put in here. Show me what you did, but like in the text or in the code. So all I did so, is I just made another inner key, and then when we before we altered it, I appended it and printed it out in the right. I did something similar earlier. Let me uncomment this. Right, so we're still going the countdown and then yeah, possible keys. Let me uncome with this. And let me uh we're still doing that, appendant key value. Alright, yeah, you know what the fuck? We'll just leave that there. Um the only thing is for let's say the key we iterate through. You use the Zorox standard one? Uh, yes. All right, cool. So let's like run this, right? So what it did basically, right, is, oh, let me get that uh, new line jump in here. So it's easier to read. Cool, yeah. So like with the index of 37, the value 56, and then counting down from 37, it ran Zor operators on each other. Is this what it's doing? Yeah, so each each letter or each number is being operated on individually. Wait, was it running? What's the uh, operation it's doing? Wait. So, so K. Yeah, so they're hard coding K to start. So for the first loop, it's one. One, yeah. And then. But then the next time it hits this. Run it on the key, which is. Oh, no, it's running on the value, right? Yeah. So. The so value, the value is of the index. Yeah, see? So that's how they got 57. And then they took 57. Did they still run it on 56? No. no they, they ran it on 57. On itself? No. No, so. Okay, so what was the. So do that again. So you had your value of 1. Right, so yeah, the value was 1. And then the. Or no, the key is 1. And the value is 56. Yeah, 56. So, so that's how you got 56. 56. So now the key is 57. And the value. We don't have. Is it still 56? Or does the value change? 
nah. Oh, for countdown. Oh. Right? Oh. No. How'd they get 11? Oh, you know what we could do? 11 and then the value, which is what? 57? Is 50? So, 57, 50. Is that how they got 11? So where'd they get 50? Where's 50? Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. So I want to, let's just print out K each time it iterates through this so we can see what the heck is going That's on. That's what it's doing here. Okay. I want to print it before and after though. I think, wait, what's the possible keys? Are those the, yeah, so that's what these are. So like, cause like, what's the length of this length? 38, yeah. So this is each of the keys for each of the 38 iterations. I mean, technically, if this if these were the keys, right? We could copy this, replace it with Zorox, and then run it. But that still doesn't work. Because those aren't the right keys. I feel like we're overthinking a little bit. I agree. Wait a second. Okay, never mind. So wait, what's the character for F? Or the order, order. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. order. Of the letter F is 102. Right, so after our first operation, our value should be 102. So can we just do like 102 and then the key? Try. So 102, and then if it starts with 1, it should be 103 as the first character. So if that's the case, when it's doing the key and then the value, the first value should be 103 to get 102. Am I right in saying that? Uh, I think so. But, I mean, that works for the ones we already know. You know what I mean? But we can't do that for... Not for necessarily. Because... Oh, let me see this. Because we only need two values, right? Mm -hmm. We already have... So it gives us the key, or these keys possible keys. I don't fucking know. Well, if this is the cipher text, this is the flag. So why don't we just run what to wait? Cause if 102 and then we do 26, that's 124. So if we do 124, modulus or sorry Zor is 26 
That's how you get 102. So how do we get the 26? So 26 would be, if this is the decrypted, this is the ciphertext, then the key is 26. Or I mean, no, this is the ciphertext. So where did they get 124 from? Or where could we get 124 from? I don't even know if you're catching my drift. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Sorry, right, I was drinking something. Say that again. No, you're good. You're good. I'm trying to figure out, right, if... Oh, whoops. If F is our first character, because it's our flag, right? Uh -huh. That Unicode's going to be 102. Um, it gives us the encrypted version of the flag, right, using these hypothetical keys somehow. Yeah. So... If our, what, orders, basically, right? Can we get 124 from here? Is that like, if we use uh, Xorox, let me run this and then grep for 124. Does it ever appear? Binary file matches what? All right, you know what? output.txt cool if we go and cat output.txt and grep for 124 You know, I should just fucking delete yeah, I this agree. if statement. Wait a second, so is that the flag for all of them 26? No, because that would take away from what the challenge is doing. If we get the order of L, that's 108. And if you just do 108 on that one, that's 109. Or D F One. 
this one or not. I know what I need to do. Oh, um, wait, so order F, and then that's one of two. So if we do one to two, and the key is one, that's what that is. So, in let's say we do like a BIM output to TXT. I swear if John Hammond comes out with a video with this afterwards, it's like two seconds long. I I'm know, freaking right? out. <laughs> uh. Why is the Discord being so weird? The fuck? Can y'all hear me? Yeah. All right, cool. My Discord's about to crash, just so you know. <laughs> no. Yeah. All right. Um. So key equals Zorax, and then the possible key is Zorax list. For two list. So for index value and the numerate key. Alright, cool. So Cryptex now has uh has Zor Cipher. Nice. Uh, it's just the hex version of it, though. It's nothing over the top. And I feel like I could actually fucking use it for the, for the thing. I'm kind of lost. Trying to reverse this. So, the thing is, right? Like, you only need two values, and then you can get virtually any value you want, well, right? We don't if you have two is the issue. Well. 
the problem we, is we have two there, but they don't use the, that one. They don't actually use. Right, so with each of their things. Oh! Okay, so the number of times it changes is only dependent on the index and nothing else. Yeah. Okay. That's so that means the first for the. One is always one. Because yeah. One yeah. Well, let me look at this. I'll put the TXT. Eric posted how it works down in uh, Mountain Town General. Oh, okay, so then that just means we have to iterate. I might, ha I have an idea, I think. Wait, so. You basically just do the same thing. You set it to, let's say, yeah. you that one, and then you do the modulus operation all the way down however many times. Key that pie. So, in theory, oh, fuck you. I almost deleted all my work over there. <laughs> Alright, so for I in the range of how many characters are there? 38? So where did that 56 come from? Oh, so that's the last. Okay. Well, got you. What up, fresh squeezed goose man? Oh, so goose. Goose, I did a thing. What'd you do? I uh, took inspiration from these two beating their heads against the, the Zor Cipher or the Zorox challenge and uh, coded a Zor Cipher into uh, Cryptex. 
Doesn't do fuck all to help with the challenge, but, you know, at least it exists. <laughs> it's, all, it's, it's, all. More or less a, it's more or less a proof of, hey, I learned something through this. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, I think Meglin, or no, Gladiator, solves the, um... That one I gave to. Or why didn't he DM me back? Wait, so it, it reads through each of the 38. Oh, that's weird. Uh, so, oh yeah, so you can do for I in the length of something like. I'm so tired. Oh, so for I in Zorox. Because technically that is still 38, and you'll get the indexes. Okay. So. Right. Then. We just do the decryption. So for so if K is equal to one or K is equal to I. Mm -hmm. So yeah, K equals one. And then they do the, so for J in the range of 38 counting down. So range of, of 38 to zero, negative one, let's just do So theoretically, this should just. I hate that word theoretically. Oh my God. All right. This. <laughs> Hypothetically, that's almost as bad as moist. All right. There you go. So it goes from 38 to, to 1. But it needs to start on 0. What if I do one here? All right, so what if I do negative one? There you go. So 38 to zero, got you. All right, so now we can just do the encryption process, right? So K, this thing equals, J, or, Looking at codes for too long, my eyes are burning. Just <laughs> <laughs> get some blue bets or something. So for key and keys, K is equal to one. For J in range of 38, negative one, negative one, we could just do keys.
Lucky shell over here. Two fifty four. Like, I understand, but I don't. <laughs> yeah. I just I broke my head because the way we're writing this is we're doing the that many operations per number, right? So you're doing 30, for the first one, you're going to be doing 38 operations using the last, the last key, right? Yeah. But how this is written is is doing it by each individual number in the big number. Why don't we just encrypt flag? Because then we're, we're running into the same issue where we have the flag, but everyone has their own individual key. John Hammond said this was easy. Well, no. Because it's just running an operation on itself. Right? So on the first iteration, right, it's going to be the first, uh, uh, fuck, hold up. <laughs> I understand this, I promise you, hold up. Uh, yeah, so on, right, the first iteration, right, which is iteration one, it's going to. I guess iteration zero, I just went. Yeah, so iteration zero, nothing happens. Iteration one, right, it goes to the first index. Um, it gets that first value, and then the key is equal to one. Yeah, so it K set to one. The value it used to decode or to encode was 209. Yeah, so the thing is, though, right? So for, let's say, when you hit index 2, right? It's just going to do it two times. So we just have to do for i in the range of 38. And then we'll just do for i in the range of the um, the index. Right? So for index and keys. And then... For uh, i in the range of our actual index, then we just do the decryption or the encryption to get the keys. Something like this. Hold on. Right. So for index and keys, if keys are Zorox, right? So that's going to be for i in the range of what zero to thirty-eight or for the first 38 characters, yeah, I will have key of one. Then for I in the range of the index, yeah. So this should key up high. J is not defined. Oh shit, yeah. List out of range, which is out of range. Index out of range. Let me print index. It's going to be zero, one, two, nine. Yeah, so the range isn't based on the index. It's more based on the position of where that. Index oh, 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 so it's index. So it's going to be keys index. index. Yeah. We can count this out. Yeah. Big goose man die. Wait, hold on. Something I'm doing here is wrong. Which one's the value? So that first K, if we're reversing it, has to start at the value itself. Right, so, and then here we're just doing for i in the range of the index, 
for index and keys. Yeah, so if it's index two, then you get the keys value. Right, because when it's two, we iterate two times. So, so this is for one, so this would be, oh, I see what I'm saying. I see what this is doing. Yeah, I need to get. How do you get like index of in? Yeah, how do you get index of? Because this is 26. I would be 26 and eight. Oh, unless if we did uh, range. Oh yeah, there you go. That's what I've been doing. Thirty-seven. So you get a one zero. Or right, just do negative. range of the length of an encode. Or actually, uh, I think we want to use index excellent. Is not don't we? Yeah. So all we need to do is index is equal to i. Hold on, I'm doing something wrong. We're so close, fucking hell. All right, wait, wait. So index two, right? Which means for I in the range of basically Oh, you know what we can do? Just we'll do 38. So I range was here to 38, right? So that'll be those 30 characters. Um, so on the first index, which would be I, we just need to do the K equation. confusing myself a little bit but I know what I'm trying to do so if this is let's say this is the first iteration that's zero one two then the value would be the keys at that index I'll be right back. and then cool index error this out of range so instead of for I in the range Print f string index value So on iteration one, it will get keys index one, which will be what, 209. So then for I, oh, for I, yeah. So for uh, J in the range, is that what the problem was? So for J in the range of the index we can just do K and then the keys
So 1, 109, 130. So index, index, value, value. solve it while I was gone I wish <laughs> <laughs> but I'm close because I'm basically just reinventing how they're doing this yeah. area on like with all the bullshit and then uh, grabbing the keys like the thing is like we have ciphertext right mm -hmm. and we have like Basically, an encrypted key. An encrypted key. But because this is the first key, it's one. But the second key is an iteration of two. So we just. See, how did they get from here to 109, right? Like, they just did one by the value of 108, right? So the key and the value, that's how they got 109. So to inverse this, right, but if they're doing it, like, let's say if the key and then they do the value of 239. And then they do the new key. And then the value of 239. Nah. Does the value change? The what value? 
there's the I guess technically like the like there's like the index mm -hmm. and then the value that sits in that index. I don't we're think that changes. That's the value we're trying to get to. I killed myself. Hold up. Let me see this out. Which, how does the math work again? So K, so it gets the key.
So one plus two oh nine plus two oh eight. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, So for safer character and safer tanks. So for cipher character and cipher text.
I'm wondering if we try iterating through the ciphertext instead. Fizz. Mm -hmm. <laughs> ciphertext. Uh, yeah. Um, try it. And then try to decrypt each character as you iterate through it. It can't be this hard. It has to be a lot more simple. Cause <laughs> There's 150 souls right now. So if we iterate through each of these characters, the cipher care and cipher text.
Unless if that's not what's happening. Uh, so if I do write one this to the value of 174. So it's key by value. So key and then the value of 174 is 175. So K is so this is one to the one this is one seven five to the one seven four. So how'd you get 35? Also 35 is in. So I'm confused about something. Hmm. So let's say for like the index seven, right? So it's going to iterate seven times and then run the Zor operation on the key. But how is it getting, if it's doing the key Zor, Zor the value. So the says, encryption process starts at one, but the decryption should start at the value, basically its value, right? Well, let's say for encryption, so if it's one and then 174, right? So that's 175, so that's how they got this one, right? That's how they got 175. Mm -hmm. But if it's adding that, so now the key is now 175, right? Mm -hmm. So 175, and this is doing the same value of 174? No, so do 175 to the value of 141. 34? Yeah, so now do 175 to 34. 
So that's what it's doing in your code there. So how does it get the 34? So what, in, in your code, Is that the you random the number? Code, I'm assuming that or it's the value it got from the last set. I don't know. I'm trying to figure it out. So how do they get that 34? Because if we can figure that out, then we can probably solve it. What's that? Um, do we get penalized if we answer a question wrong? Submit a wrong question? Submit a wrong. Some of them we do. I don't know about this one. It usually has a countdown or a, if you submit it wrong, if it tells you you have however many tries out of however many tries, then it does. Right, I'm not seeing one. one. I think I might have solved when am I? Nice. If we look at the Zorox that pi. So it's doing the K value, which starts at one, and that's running a Zor operation on the key at index J. So if it's counting down from the number oh so when it's 174 at two no wait oh no wait 175 in the next two I, I didn't get it i'm gonna get back to working <laughs> oh cool <laughs> So one, and then the value of 174 gets you 175. So the next iteration, K is now equal to 175. And then it's doing a XOR operation on the key at index J. So in this case, J would be two, but what's the key it's getting? So the key at index two, so it'd be like 209 or 108. Do you know who Nick or Nilgim is? Mm -mm. Is he in the Discord? He's on the team, but. Oh. Oh, I know there's a couple people who joined the Discord and asked if they could be a part of the team, but I don't know if they're like a saint or not.
Where are you right now with this whole thing? Just trying to reverse the. Trying to reverse the uh, encryption. So I'm going. I'm trying to start at the uh, first index of the keys, and then yeah, undo yes, basically what is what basically what you're trying to do. wonders if there's a constant value shift because we're doing that enumeration that way mm -hmm. I'm wondering if the difference between what we like the inner value or the like key they use versus the key we get is always the same difference like the numbers might be different but what if they're the same gap in between that's very plausible I'm trying to do is match the ciphertext to the keys and see if I can start fucking trying to like brutefully decrypt it. I'm just trying to remember and understand how the actual thing works. Um, so for each encrypted character in the ciphertext, then we'll get our key that we're going to use for that character. Then if k is equal to one, then for i in the range of our index, because that's how many times we have to encrypt it, then we'll do k is equal to k of Our cipher character Oh, wait a second. It's only me. Uh, welcome back. 
That's why I left. You started so you talking about my real name. You, you, st you started talking about my legal name. <laughs> Your legal name is, uh... Yep. You can see why you go by size, that can be pretty annoying. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, every every time somebody burps at a bar, I think they're talking about me. I'm just like, well, fuck you. <laughs> you and your fucking chips. These things are smacking. Sound like it. <laughs> Put it out there. Uh, I'm really not sure how many fucking cigarettes I can actually tolerate anymore. It's to the point where my brain says you need, it, but then as soon as I go and I get one, I'm like, <laughs> what if it's like binary and not like Unicode? Well, no, you're still matching to ask you though. I think. Yeah. Imagine if you were chasing the wrong fucking site for the whole time. I would kill myself. So it gets keys and then J. Right, so it gets the index. So it does it by the key. So flag I. I don't know. I'm actually gonna be around tonight. I mean, tomorrow night I'm gonna probably, hopefully, have my fucking head in the game better. Oh, cool, man. So, if I leave the Black Cybersecurity Association Discord server, am I racist? I don't know. So for I in the range of the index, 
Hold up. Yeah, so how does it do that though? My brain will never know. I will get this before I go to sleep, or we will get this before we I go to sleep. <laughs> There's always this one challenge every CTF that grabs me by the dick, and I can't leave it. That they say is easy, but really it's not. I'm sure it's easier than we think it is. Probably just over engineering. Why don't we just hit up John Hammond and be like, bro, what the fuck is with that one challenge? I just got it. I just got it. You got it? Got it. How'd you get it? Oh. <sighs> I was so I was messing with my output data. Am I, am I sharing my screen right? Mm -hmm. So I was messing with my output data and found the relationship between. So like, I'll show you. Um, so I took this. This so these are the output keys we got, right? Mm -hmm. These are the keys that are being used that are hidden. So I took this one here. So I did. 188 to uh, let's just say 45 so the next one in line and just to see what it was and it was 145 and I was like oh wait that's that one so then I tried 45 to 149 got the next one. Oh, nice so then I just wrote a script to pull from both of these so the key is that minus one so the flag will be, so I get the character for each index with that decryption key and the encrypted text. And I just add it to. Cool, you submit it? Yeah. Wow. That was, we were way over engineering it. That's what I was saying. Good job, man. Thanks. <laughs>